Hello, I'm Andrew McKinney. I'm here today to complete an assessment of the feasibility of using the $50 Wiimote whiteboard created by Johnny Lee of Carnegie Mellon's HCI Institute versus traditional $3,000 plus vendor electronic whiteboards used at companies and organizations today. While this assessment was completed for a middle school, in particular Central Woodlands 5-6 building in Ada, Michigan, this can be applied to organizations and businesses of all sizes. I'll be covering three main points in this assessment. The first, ease of installation and calibration. The second, ease of use and quality of image. And the third, scalability of the technology and usefulness outside of a whiteboard. The Wiimote whiteboard is a very new technology, and so the installation will require some technical prowess on your behalf. First, you'll need to get your Wiimote talking to your computer via Bluetooth. Some Bluetooth adapters will not work, so make sure you check out wheelie.org for compatible Bluetooth hardware and drivers. Some people like Johnny Lee use Blue Solil, a third-party software solution to connect, but I was able to do this with my standalone HP software on my work computer. The next step is to build an infrared pen. I built mine using parts I found at Radio Shack, an infrared LED light, a momentary switch, and a battery pack, all connected to an oversized Crayola pen. This design can obviously be improved, but this was done to prototype the process. The next step is to calibrate the whiteboard using Johnny Lee's Wiimote calibration software. The Wiimote will need to be placed in such a way that it's close enough to get a solid view of the light but far away enough to capture the area of the entire screen. Since the Wiimote camera has a 45 degree field of vision, this step is probably the most difficult for day-to-day -day use. This can be overcome to some extent with a straight arm microphone stand or similar. That being said, the ability to capture the pen movements on any surface makes the Wiimote more useful than the vendor electronic whiteboard solution. After calibration, you're up and running. You can use the pen as you would a mouse. The ease of use of the Wiimote whiteboard is its greatest quality. In order to understand why it is a more usable technology, the limitations of the vendor solutions must be understood first. There are two major limiting factors to most vendor electronic whiteboards. Their need for using dedicated device hardware and the poor quality of their touch sensitivity. For most vendor electronic whiteboards, in order to draw a line, a student or teacher must pick up the pen to write. The cradle for the pen detects that it has been removed and tells the computer use black pen, use blue pen, etc. No more than one pen can be used at a time, and if the user wants to scroll or change windows, they need to put the pen back in its cradle. Otherwise, their finger movements may be interpreted as pen movements. Moreover, the vendor board requires you to press rather hard to pick up the pen's movements. This may seem like a non-issue, but if a bit of your hand gets in the way, it will be understood as a pen marking and will throw off whatever you're trying to draw. The Wiimote, on the other hand, works as a mouse would on a computer. There is no distinction for the user between marker, mouse, eraser, etc. This offers a lower level of cognitive friction, as the use of the device is immediately clear to the user. Two teachers at the school at the time of our testing were able to play around with it live and confirm this. Holly Hansen and Aaron Cliff were impressed by its ease of use. Plus, the thing about it is you don't even have to touch the screen. Now the quality of the image is something different altogether. The Wiimote can tend to have jagged lines. Johnny Lee attributes this to proper Wiimote placement. However, perfect placement can be difficult to accomplish. As said before, a workaround is to attach the Wiimote to a microphone stand or similar, where you can achieve solid placement and not have to worry about the table being kicked and throwing off the calibration. The vendor board quality is better. The lines are clear and confident. However, the lines can be confused by touches from other parts of the hand, or if you don't press hard enough. Needless to say, the Wiimote wins hands down in this area. Fender electronic whiteboards require physical hardware to be moved, and you are limited by the size of the screen. With the Wiimote, you have virtually no limits on how big your screen can be, where you can place it, etc. Johnny Lee demonstrates this by projecting it on a table and using it as an interactive tabletop. So which one is better? Depends on your needs. If you're a large organization with a lot of money to spend and absolutely need an out-of-box vendor solution, the vendor electronic whiteboards are for you. However, if you're a school or organization on a limited budget and have technological prowess in-house, seriously consider the Wiimote solution. 
With the $3,000 it would take to outfit one classroom with the vendor electronic whiteboard technology, one could outfit eight classrooms with a projector, Wiimote, and pen. As well, the usefulness outside of a whiteboard technology is nearly limitless. You can use it as an interactive tabletop, create interactive environments throughout your organization, create point-and-click games for students or customers to use, and if you are a school, the building of these devices is a simple, project-based activity that could be undertaken by a classroom for a relatively low cost.